climate change is literally one of the most uh, you know, significant challenges that human civilization has, to, has had to confront. And we can't just bury our heads in the sands. Um, the decisions that we are making to now about our emissions, our carbon emissions, are going to impact future generations, uh, the world that we leave our children and grandchildren. It's hard for the scientists to make the public realize that we do have an emergency. If we continue to burn all the fossil fuels, we will certainly get those effects. We can't say exactly what date the ice sheet is going to collapse, but we know that the ice sheets will collapse and sea level will go up many meters. We know that methane hydrates eventually will come out. We can't say when it's going to be really rapid. The effect of an ice-free Arctic on the world is, is a very large one it, because it goes way beyond the Arctic itself because once the sea ice has disappeared, firstly uh, that produces a, a decrease in the global albedo, the amount of radiation reflected uh, by the Earth, and has a knock-on effect in the sense that the warmer air masses in the Arctic in summer cause a retreat of the snow line and the snow line decrease has just as big an effect on the albedo as the sea ice decrease has. So there's global albedo change which affects the temperature of the entire planet, it warms it all up. Uh, and then there's the fact that as the sea ice retreats it uh, allows the, the water masses around the shelves of the Arctic to warm up and that warms up the seabed and releases more methane from the uh, subsea permafrost which is melting away and that methane itself is a very very powerful greenhouse gas so we're having a methane kick uh, coming in from the retreat of the sea ice which again is a global effect rather than simply an arctic effect. But that's a reversible tipping point because if the planet cools a few tenths of a degree then ice will begin to reform in the winter. There are potential irreversible effects of melting the sea ice. If it begins to allow the Arctic Ocean to warm up and warm uh, the ocean floor, then we'll begin to release methane hydrates. And if we let that happen, that's a potential tipping point that we don't want to pass. I think that the concept of adapting to the climate change is really a dangerous one because there is the potential for climate effects which humanity practically cannot adapt to. If the ice sheets become unstable and sea level goes up multimeters and eventually tens of meters, well, you're going to put all of the cities on coasts all around the world underwater and you will destroy all of that heritage. So we don't want that to happen. That's, the economic consequences of that are so enormous. It, it makes no sense to talk about adaptation to that. And likewise, if we, if we burn all the fossil fuels, then we certainly will cause the methane hydrates eventually to come out and cause several degrees more warming. And it's not clear that civilization could survive that extreme climate change. We shouldn't be meddling with the planet. But we've spent a couple of hundred years meddling with the climate by pumping tons, millions, billions of tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. Right now, every year, we pump 35 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere. That's 35 billion tons of CO2 that would not otherwise be there were it not for our actions. I think it's very important that we should try geoengineering it's not a solution, of course, and that's, that's the thing, it's a sticking plaster. Um, it will enable uh, the radiative forcing effect of, of what man is doing to be reduced so that the, the rate of warming of the planet will go down. Uh, but it'll only work so long as we keep applying it, and that, that means spreading whatever we're spreading into the atmosphere. And also, it, it doesn't have any effect on the carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere, which means that 
processes that are due to just to carbon dioxide, like acidification of the ocean, those will continue just as fast and, and then have their own impact. So it's not actually a long-term solution, but it could buy time for us to be able to reduce uh, carbon emissions in other ways. What we're looking at is a way of getting out of some dire consequences of having pumped billions of tonnes of CO2 in the atmosphere over the last 100, 150, 200 years. Well, you know, with regard to geoengineering, these uh, schemes to try to offset global warming, for example, by uh, shooting large amounts of uh, aerosol sulfate particles into the stratosphere, like happens during a large volcanic eruption, to try to mimic the effect of a volcanic eruption, which is a cooling influence on the climate. So if we could simulate something like a Mount Pinatubo type eruption every few years, well, we might be able to cool, uh, put enough offsetting cooling uh, into the system to offset the warming influence of increasing greenhouse gas concentrations. But as climate modelers look at what the impact of that might be, it turns out there are all sorts of possible uh, unforeseen consequences. Um, it turns out that uh, even though the overall uh, temperature of the, the globe could perhaps be maintained, the two factors don't exactly offset each other. You would actually get large regional changes in the climate system, and you could end up warming the Arctic even faster. We could melt away Arctic sea ice even faster if we were to engage in one of these schemes. We can't engineer these kinds of large-scale exercises overnight. And if in 10, 15, 20, 30 years' time we need geoengineering, well, how about we get the infrastructure set up first. If next year you need a fire engine to put out a fire in your house, is that the time to start designing the fire engine? Well, the way I like to look at a lot of these so-called geoengineering schemes is from the standpoint that as climate scientists, we're sort of planetary doctors. We're trying to diagnose um, the health of the planet as we continue to change our environment. And one of the principles of, um, you know, in medicine, uh, and it's an oath that all doctors take, is to first do no harm. First, above all else, do no harm. And I think that geoengineering potentially uh, violates the sort of uh, planetary Hippo Hi Hippocratic oath of uh, climate science. Is, what is my responsible response, uh, uh, considered response as an engineer? Well, I'm going to start helping to design the fire engine, I'm afraid. <laughs>